Welcome yogis. This practice is designed for when you have those moments in your cycle which are uncomfortable, painful, exhausting. And it can be for people who are just generally struggling with period pain or it can be for people who are struggling with endometriosis. And sometimes we experience sensation or strength of sensation um, around the lower belly area and the lower back in particular. It can be cramping, it can be discomfort, it can be a feeling of, of achiness that doesn't seem to go away. And this can come around around uh, the time of ovulation. It can also come around in the week leading up to our period and during the period itself. I want you to use this practice at any time that it feels like you need this in your body. And at the same time, it's also a really valuable practice to come to when you're feeling like you just need to create a little bit of space in this area, okay? Whether it be ovulation or, or your cycle time already. So we're gonna get really cozy with the practice today. And I've got us set up with extra cushions, a bolster, and two blocks. And then I've also got two balls. We're going to be focusing our attention in this practice on yin yoga. I'm gonna be talking to you a little bit about Chinese medicine and how different pathways in the body um, help us to stimulate and create this sense of balance and ease more efficiently in the body. We're also gonna think about nervous system health and how we can move ourselves from the busy part of life, that busy place of stress and doing, which also tends to hold, find us holding into this very area which we want to create a little bit of freedom and space in and shifting gear into this place of rest and digest nourish and restore which is parasympathetic nervous system so the focus is going to be on yin yoga shapes finding ourselves in this really comfortable supported place with the use of our props and then we'll add in a little bit of myofascial release because this can feel like it works wonders in our lower back area in particular Okay, so let's get started. You can put the balls just to one side and we're going to take the cushions either side of our mat about halfway down. Okay, and those will be to support our legs in a moment. Our bolster is going to lie behind us just like this. Now some of you might like to take a block and you can add it on the second hide if you've got a nice sturdy bolster, or you can just simply take it onto the first hide, a little elevation of the, the head here above the heart. And I want you to have a gap of maybe two or three centimeters, an inch or so between your lower back and the cushion. And then bring the cushions to a place where they support your legs. We're bringing the soles of the feet to touch, knees are drawing outward, and we're just gonna slowly lie ourselves down into this yummy juicy position scoop the buttocks under just gives you a little bit more length and space in the lower back here make any little adjustments that you need to with the cushions here i like to take them at an angle so that there's a bit more support for the whole of the leg and then let your arms just naturally come away from the center of the body to a place where you feel like there's a little stimulation through the inside of the arms here chest is broad and open and there's this feeling of, of ease so make sure that you take your time to establish a, a position that feels really supporting really nourishing for you so that you can really start to unwind and find your place of freedom here and once you've made all of those little adjustments to your props just start to close your eyes soften the space in between the eyebrows Soften around the outside corners of the eyes, corners of the mouth. Notice how it feels to relax the tongue away from the roof of the mouth here. And this feeling of ease that comes in around the jaw, around the neck. The shoulders drawing down on either side of the cushion. Letting gravity do all of the work for us here so there's no effort or holding around the neck and shoulders. And just give the fingers a little wiggle, remind them to relax. And then start to draw your attention now down towards the heart space. Becoming aware of this gentle rising and, and falling of the chest. As the lungs beneath the ribs start to expand, filling up with fresh prana, fresh chi. And then guide your attention just a little bit further down towards the belly area here. Maybe even place a hand onto the belly and just notice how that feels. 
And often when we're in discomfort or when we're under pressure, we're feeling a little anxious, overwhelmed, this area is an area that we tend to grip and hold on to. And in doing so, we're, we're clenching the muscles tight around the digestive system, around our core. And we're telling the nervous system that we're in this, this state of fight or flight, getting ready for battle. And while you're here, just see if you can start to feel that area soften beneath your hand. Notice how as it starts to soften, there's this feeling of, of ease, both physically in the tissues beneath your fingers, but also in the mind. And the more that we let the, the brain, the body, the nervous system know that we're okay, the more that we find this place of ease within our, our physical tissues here as well. And consciously drawing ourselves into this calmer part of our nervous system where everything gets to function as it should and we get to restore our batteries, our energy, allowing our chi and our prana to circulate as it should through the body. Now take the hand back to a place on the ground that feels comfortable. And draw your attention down towards the, the groin and the inner thighs. And just notice if you can soften and relax there as well, now that you have the support beneath the legs. And then wiggle the toes, just making sure that all of the muscles throughout the whole of the body here are just entirely relaxed. And then slowly start to work your way with your attention, with your focus, all the way back up to the heart space. And let your attention linger around the, the heart for a moment or two. And I want to invite you to just let go of everything else that's going on in your world. Let go of everything you were doing before this moment. All of the things that you were thinking about or talking about, reading about. And can you let go of thinking about what comes next, whether it be in the practice today or whether it's in your day-to-day -day life, the rest of the week, and invite yourself to be present in the here and now. And the easiest way for us to do that is to notice the breath. So start to notice whether it feels easier for you to breathe in through the nose or through the mouth. And then start to follow with your awareness the journey of the breath down through the throat. Notice how it reaches in towards the lungs and the lungs start to expand and the tissues and bones, the ribs around the lungs start to lift upward and out to the left and right side of your body here as well. And as you exhale, just notice how everything starts to draw back towards center. Letting the energy work its way back out through the throat and it's leaving the body through the mouth or the nose. And let every inhale just guide you a little bit deeper inside, becoming aware of even more expansion around the heart and the lungs. And the quality of the breath, the energy that we draw into the lungs is guided down into all of the other organs, dictating the health of everything else inside of us. And then every exhale is that opportunity to let go of everything, everything that we no longer need to hold on to, making space for the new with every single exhale and the, the new moments, the new ways of being and thinking arriving with the inhale. And now let's take it a step further. So we'll introduce a pranayama here. So as you inhale, we're guiding the breath in through the nose or mouth. And we're counting to the number four your own count of four. And then when it's time for the exhale to begin, let's see if we can let the exhale be longer than the inhale. So either the count of six, or if you can manage the count of eight. And just continuing that cycle, inhaling to your count of four. And then exhaling to your count of six or eight. And notice how it feels to have this simple, single focus for your mind. Notice where you have this single focus, nothing else around you 
but within you distracts you quite so easily. And this extended exhale pranayama, such a nice way to draw us more efficiently, more calmly into this place of being. Parasympathetic nervous system stimulated. We move away from this fight or flight mode, this place where we can start to recharge our energy, replenish our resources, calm our body down from the inside out. You might start to notice the belly expanding as well as the lungs above, just drawing that energy into that space that needs our attention, needs our love. We're going to take another three rounds of breath just here. And one third round of breath is complete. Just taking a moment to come back to your natural breath. Noticing how you're feeling. Noticing how your mood is. How your energy is. How the breath has slowed down a little from when we first arrived into the practice together. And know that this shape has given us the opportunity to stimulate through the the kidney and the liver and the spleen, meridian lines through the inside line of the leg. And finding some space in all of those areas in the upper body here as well. All of the organs that can be affected by this physical discomfort when there are imbalances in our, our cycle, our hormones. And just finding a moment to recharge everything physically and mentally. Take another breath where you are. And then start to walk those arms in a little closer towards your legs, just guiding the legs away from the cushions now, feet come to the earth. And two choices, you can either roll away from your props and rest on the left side of your body or simply push into the forearms, chin to the chest and lift yourself up nice and slowly. And from here you'll lean forward, wrap your arms around your shins and just draw the chin to the chest, closing your eyes. In whichever shape you've chosen to be in, just noticing that rounding through the upper back, guiding our breath into the back of the lungs, the back of the heart space. And just pausing here in whichever of the two shapes you're in for a moment. And then if you're lying on your side, just gently pushing the ground away from you with your hands, lifting yourself up to a seat. And those of you already seated, just releasing your arms and lifting yourself up as well. So let's just take our, our cushions and place those near to the end of the mat. We might use those later. And then bolster to the side here as well. And you're going to take the blocks near the top of the mat. Now for this shape, we're going to want to have our two balls, okay? So I've got two balls. You can use tennis balls here if you need to. And we're going to come into what we call sphinx pose um, as an option briefly. And we're going to be placing the balls just around the inside area of the, the pelvic bowl here. And for some of you, that's going to be a little too sensitive with the balls. But for me, it often feels really nice just for a second or two, even a minute at the most. And then we relieve them. Now, if it doesn't feel good for you with the balls, please don't force it. You'll just come into the shape of sphinx instead, which creates this wonderful opening of the fat around the front of the body here as well. So I'm going to begin on my belly and I'm just going to lean to the side and place the ball into the area that I described here. Okay, um, your choice is to come into a sphinx pose like this and it's pretty intense at the moment and if this doesn't feel good for you, you're going to very gently just lie yourself down onto the balls and that feels pretty delicious for, for me and my body right now. So just noticing how that feels for you. Position the balls in a place that is manageable, okay, so that you can allow your, your inner thigh to relax, your lower back, the belly to soften. 
And we're just creating a little bit of, of hydration in the fascia that wraps around the tissues and muscles in this area. And let's let the elbows be wider than the shoulders if we're simply lying on our belly here. Now, if you're in the upright position of Sphinx, you might want to stack your blocks one on top of the other, resting your forehead onto the blocks here. And that just allows a little more awakening of the, the liver and the heart and the kidney meridian through the upper body here. And know that we're stimulating this area in, in the hip as well. Just notice how that feels for you. Try to let the buttocks relax. Finding a place of ease within the areas that perhaps are giving you a little discomfort here. And know that these are temporary moments in time. This is designed to create space in the tissues all the way through the front of the belly, through the connection points of the upper and lower body. It just always feels like it gives me a little bit more freedom here. And then we're here for just three more breaths with the ball in place. And then you'll just slowly lean to one side, release the balls to the side now. And you're going to stay or come up if you were lying down into Sphinx pose here. And the chest is reaching forward. Some of you, if you were already in Sphinx pose, might like to extend up into seal pose, which is with the arms straight. Legs are still relaxed here. Chest reaching forward and this awakening through the, the front of the belly. This creation of space at a time when we are often in discomfort perhaps and we have this tendency instead of, of closing off the front body, we curl and protect this area. And yet this space invites energy, it invites space, spaciousness, freedom in the tissues, hydration in the tissues, which is so important for us, as well as that circulation of chi through these meridian lines that govern so much of our, our health as women. Let's take three more breaths here. When the third breath is complete for you, you'll just make your way down onto your forearms, just moving your blocks and your balls out of the way. And let's just make a little pillow for our head to rest on here. Now, some of you might need a little movement, so if that's the case, you can come into tabletop position and just round through the spine. And as you inhale, you'll come forward opening up more through the belly and the chest. And this little movement of cat and cow might feel really inviting, particularly if you're experiencing discomfort or tenderness in the lower back here as well. And we're gonna take another three or four breaths, wherever you are, stillness or movement. And when you finish those three breaths, just slowly start to use the hands to lift you up to a comfortable seat here. And then from your comfortable seat, just bring the bottom to the ground, place the feet out ahead of you a little, and we're gonna take the two blocks now. And we're gonna make sure we've got enough space behind us to lie down here. And just bring yourself onto your backs, feet to the ground, knees up to the sky, and we're gonna turn the blocks so that the when we lift the hips up, they're resting under the sacrum here. So the bottom is supported. It's not hanging over the edge and it's not feeling uncomfortable here. Now you've got the option of the blocks running in an opposite direction to the mat, or you can turn around, turn them around to be kind of running parallel to your mat. Choice is yours. In this instance, at this time of the month, I quite like to have them running in the opposite direction to the mat itself. Now, what's really nice for me in my practice is just taking time either one, at a le one leg at a time or both legs together, just straightening out that leg. And it just creates this wonderful feeling of release again through this area of the front body. And then if I'm going with both, both legs at once, I'm just gonna check in with how my lower back feels here. And remember you can just slowly, with the muscles as relaxed as you can, just alternate from side to side. 
And then I like to take my arms off overhead here as well. And there's this nice lengthening through the front body in amongst that time when we have a tendency to clench and hold and protect this area. Just creating some space. And it's also valid to come back to having both knees bent, feet on the floor here. Closing your eyes once you're settled. And just allowing this moment of stillness to create this feeling of release through that front belly area, front of the hip. Breath is nice and slow and relaxed. And any time that you find the mind wandering away, Guide it back to the breath and perhaps you'll consider using a, a mantra. And it might be as simple as, I am aware that I'm breathing in on the inhale and I'm aware that I'm breathing out on the exhale. And sometimes when I'm in discomfort, I'll switch that mantra to, I am calm on the inhale. I am grounded on the exhale. And the mantra just provides us with this moment of, of ease, this focus. And when we find ourselves in the here and now, not anticipating the future or thinking about the past, we're really finding ourselves in this place where we can let go of everything around us, tune in, learn more about ourselves, our habits, our tendencies. And the most important part really is just slowing down, removing that layer of stress or anxiety, which does nothing to help our nervous system at this already challenging time. And we're going to take three more breaths here. And when the third breath is complete for you, just bring the arms back alongside the body if they're elsewhere. Bend into the knees, feet to the ground here, and let's lift the hips really slowly and mindfully, releasing the blocks and just letting the hips come down to the ground. And some of you might take the feet wide and rest the knees against each other. Bring your hands to rest onto the belly here. Some of you might hug the knees in and just wrap your arms around the knees, coming into a upside down child's pose. Some of you might move a little bit from side to side or choose to come to cat and cow again. And just pausing in the, the moment and the movement or stillness that your body is asking for. And just noticing how you're feeling, how your mind is, how the breath is. And still relaxed around the eyes, around the mouth. Three more breaths. And when the third breath is complete, just begin to draw the knees into the chest so that you can roll yourself over to the left side of your mat, left side of your body. And then use the hands to push the ground away and just lift yourself up to a comfortable seat here. And again, just props to the side. We're going to take hold of our two balls now. And we're going to be working with my fascia release technique here, getting into this area of the lower back, just beneath where the kidneys are sitting here. And we'll take the ball either side of the spine and the target area is anywhere from the outside here of the waist coming in towards the vertebrae of the spine. And you can come down low towards the SI joints, those sticky out bones on the back of the body, and you can work your way up to the base of the ribs. So anywhere really in this area is gonna feel lovely. And I like to take the feet down, keep a bend in the knees. It's a little more active, but it feels pretty good. Balls are under there. You can see the white one, hopefully. And I'm just going to come onto my forearms. And all I'm going to do is just spend a little bit of time rolling back and forth here. And just noticing how that feels for me. 
And sometimes that feels really juicy, okay? So in which case, continue to work into that area and the balls will move, so you'll have to keep bringing them back to where you need them. And then some days it can be really nice to kind of roll a bit from left to right, maybe even zigzagging up and down the spine. And some of you might just lie down on the balls and that's gonna be plenty today. And this just creates a nice release in this area that can sometimes feel so tender, so, so tight, so uncomfortable. And it gives us this feeling of being able to take back our body, to release tension. When we're tense in these areas for lots of different reasons, particularly around ovulation and our bleeding time, we get these knots of fascia, okay? And that can sometimes add to this feeling of pressure when things are tight and not hydrated. And working with the balls in this way just allows us to free up some space, which literally then gives us this feeling of, of ease. And close your eyes, let the tongue relax away from the roof of the mouth. And keeping adjusting the ball as you feel like you need to. And moving into the areas that feel a little tender as opposed to moving away from them. And tongue stays relaxed away from the roof of the mouth if you can. We're going to take three more breaths here. And then when the third breath is complete, just release the balls. Release your hips down to the ground. Rest the balls on the belly, hands on top of the balls. Just take a moment to pause. And just notice what there is to notice around that lower back area. Some of you might experience a, a coolness or perhaps a warmth. It might be a, a numbness or a tingling sensation, whatever it is. Just tune in, become aware of it. And keep your mind focused on that sense of ease with the breath, the depth, and calming, nurturing energy that it brings us. Take another breath here. Slowly begin to roll yourself over to the left side of your body, using your hands to push the ground away here and just bring yourself up to a seat. We're gonna take the balls to the side. Make sure that you can reach your bolster. And option to use just a block. So I'm gonna show you how that looks in a moment. So have everything within reach apart from the balls. And when legs are gonna take us um, out ahead of us, legs are relaxed, feet can fall freely outward or inward as you prefer here. And then we're gonna sit tall. But what I want to do is draw the, the block Okay, this is nice for me. I get really stuck in this lower back area. So it's kind of continuing into that area we were just working into. You can, two options, draw the block in towards the belly and then lazily, those of you who can go a little deeper into the fold, curling your way forward. Muscles are entirely relaxed, remember, yin hold. And then it just allows a little bit of freedom in between the tissues of the lumbar spine here, the lower back area. Now, if that feels like it's a bit too, too deep for you, and that you're gonna grab your cushion and really hug it into the belly and then you'll roll your way over the cushion here. And then that creates this yummy feeling of space here as well. And then you can take a block on top of the cushion and just rest your head onto that. Make sure those muscles above the knees are nice and relaxed here. And then just close your eyes here. Now, if you feel like this is not going to support you enough or you can't reach the bolster at this angle, you're going to take the bolster and just place it gently between your ankles so that you've got the, the long end reaching up towards you and the head is going to rest on the other side here. And you're just going to be curling through the back of the spine here, creating this nice release here. So any of those options or anything in between, get creative with the props that allows you to find a little bit of freedom. Remember, you've got your extra pillows at the end of your mat, so you can also invite those into the practice as well. Creating the level of support that you need today. 
And you're guiding your breath around to the lower back, the back of the kidneys, which are the storage site of our jing, the storage site of our vital energy. And when the kidneys are depleted, it can have a, a knock-on effect in terms of the flow of, of qi in the system, the harmony of everything inside, as well as affecting the other organs. It's something that we want to continue throughout the cycle in different degrees, different levels at different points in the, the cycle is this ability for, for qi, for prana, for life, and blood to be able to flow easily through the system. And we have blockages for different reasons within our systems or organ health depletion. Then we find ourselves with discomfort, with pain. So we want to be focusing our attention throughout the cycle on just moving energy, moving our body, creating space through the inside line of the legs, through the front of the hip, awakening through the chest and the shoulders, releasing in the lower back, all of which helps us to find a little bit more comfort and ease. You might start to feel like there's a little bit more space to move into. So feel free to make adjustments to the props and how you're using them here. Notice this feeling of, of space in the tissues of the lower back in particular, the back of the legs for many of us as well. And for the final minute of the shape, some of you might Take the ball and place it between the cushion and your forehead, just above the center of your eye, which is a nice acupressure point for anxiety or, or worry here. And just resting the ball there, if that feels like a nice idea for you. Relaxing the jaw, relaxing the tongue. You can take any of the shapes that we practice together today and use them just one at a time, as and when your body needs, whichever suits your body best. You can come to the practice as a whole. Three more breaths here. And when the third breath is complete, just lifting the head, releasing the ball if you are using it taking the blocks to the side. And from here, we're gonna lift the cushion and we're gonna place it behind our knees, setting ourselves up for Shavasana now. So just moving ourselves down the mat here. Legs are relaxed, lying yourself down onto the mat. And you can, if you want to, bring those cushions alongside the body and letting the arms rest onto the cushions if that feels supportive for you or just allowing the arms to rest down to the ground. Choice is yours. If you have an eye pillow to cover your eyes, that might feel like a nice way to conclude the practice here as well. And just letting the upper back melt down to the ground, feeling supported by the ground, by the props. And if you have a little sandbag or something that you can rest onto your belly while you lie in Shavasana, that can feel really, really nice as well, a hot water bottle even. Closing your eyes as you come into this place of stillness. Staying in Shavasana for as long as you have time. 
If you're joining me to finish the class, just beginning to bring a little movement back into the fingers and the toes. Reaching the arms all the way up overhead, inviting a full body stretch. And drawing the knees in towards your chest, giving them a hug and just gently rolling your way over to the left side of your body. And pushing the ground away from you with your hands as you lift yourself up to a comfortable seat. Just taking a moment to self-reflect and notice how you feel, both in the mind and the body. Notice how the breath slowed down from when we first started the practice. Let's see if we can carry this feeling of space, this feeling of ease with us into the rest of our day. Coming back to it at any time that we need it. Bring the hands together at heart center. Bowing the head to the hands in gratitude for our practice in gratitude for our health. Namaste.